What is going on guys? Welcome back to King Fabin Off-Road. It has been a long time since you guys have saw me on here and I understand that makes me a horrible person. I can live with that though. There's been a lot going on in the world, a lot of trips. Uh, we went to Kentucky. We did an event at our local off-road park at Flat Nasty for uh, the 15-hour nightmare. We've been having a lot of fun and then we've just had some stuff going on with family and whatnot. So I haven't had a chance to uh, make any videos. So not to leave you hanging and not to keep you on here sip sapping about why I haven't been here. Uh, today I am working on my wife's new rig. Um, I didn't get to say goodbye to Whitey, but we got rid of the Forerunner. The 16 Trail Forerunner was amazing. We loved it. We just didn't need it though. Um, quite honestly, I paid $30,000 for that car, put some money down on it, you know, and uh, had a car payment. What's the point in having a car payment on something my wife drives literally five to 10 miles a day and it doesn't see off-road uh, unless we're driving by an off-road something or another. So with all that being said, this is a 2011 uh, Yukon, third row seating, all the fancy stuff, got 200 and something thousand. We were able to buy this from a good friend of ours uh, that was uh, offloading it because it had some engine uh, failure uh, that we were unaware of when we bought it. I made the deal and turns out we got this thing stripped down thus far. We have heads and everything off because um, it actually had a really weird problem. It was a problem which ended up me having to get a head for this thing. It's a 6.2. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the LS world, I do a little bit of everything. I'm diesel. I'm putting a motor in the ambulance here. We've got LSs. We've got we, we we got it all going on, but you know, Toyota is really where we want to be. Anyways, this thing, this is the old head, and it's really hard to tell here, but, um, which cylinder is it? Sorry. So the failure was in this valve seat. Now, it's crazy, right? Most of the time when you drop a valve seat, it will tear the motor up. Um... A lot of times it, it drops, it binds the valve, breaks the end of the valve off, goes down the piston, game over. Got a little bit lucky here on the bottom end of the motor um, because it didn't do that. But this, the seat dropped out and it actually cocked sideways and it, it gnarred all this up and you can tell that it wasn't sitting square. So long story short, by the stroke of luck, we pulled this apart, didn't find nothing. And I thought this was a lifter issue. This thing ran and drove fine, no noises or anything. It just had a miss on cylinder eight. So next thing we know, we're looking at it, come to that. Um, got down to the bottom of it and decided it ain't worth in. Uh, it's not worth, you know, putting a, uh, or having the machine shop go through it. It costs more than just getting a head. So I thought. So then I went on the search trying to find a head. Luckily, I got one from Salvage Yard, a little bit different year and stuff. It's not quite the same head, but it's going to work. Then got them all milled down to the same thickness. And we are going to be putting all of this back in here. In doing so, we are getting rid of the DOD. Uh, all of the active fuel management stuff is gone. Uh, the cylinder de deactivation is gone. Um, so in doing that, you have to change your valley cover um, to get rid of the VLOM. We're changing the cam to a stock profile, non-DOD cam. Uh, this is all stuff I personally sourced myself, um, but you can get on uh, places like Texas Speed, things like that, and you can get similar kits and do this to yours if need be. So I'm going to be cleaning everything up here, um, and then the main reason that I'm making this video is just to simply apologize for being gone for so long, not having any content. The other reason I am on here is to do a little bit of time lapsing and hopefully show you me getting this running uh, by the end of all this, just some step by step. If you haven't been to LS stuff, I can I can give a small rundown of what I'm doing there. Then we're gonna go over what Northwest Fab sent me so that we we're gonna put in the Toyota. Um, pretty excited about that. Just ironically enough, um, just last week, um, so that would have been Halloween. Uh, the clutch went out in the Toyota, not the clutch, uh, the throw out bearings really bad in the Toyota and got to screeching pretty loud on me while we were at the uh, off-road event we were at. So the Toyota is going to get gutted. It's going to have the tranny all the way out, everything in order to uh, fix what we need to fix there. 
and do the doubler slash Northwest Fab Eco Kit. And so I'm gonna give you a rundown of what's in that kit, what they sent me and everything. And then hopefully the next video or second to next, um, it's gonna be me putting some of that together for you. So stay tuned guys. Sorry for the boring video, but I'm gonna get this thing put on, uh, put together I mean, and then hopefully have a running rig for my wife again because she's been stealing wheels for a few days until I get this done and we just got the parts, so we're gonna do it. Okay, a little bit of update here, about an hours past. I got this head cleaned up, or this side anyway, driver's side. And then I decided I'd move over here and get all my timing done. I kind of skipped through that because this isn't a how-to or anything, but I uh, torqued up my cam bolt to my sprocket and uh, timed it, of course, and got all the front cover and all those bolts put back in and then put my stretchy belt on, or balancer, then stretchy belt. Next thing I'm gonna do is get this side clean, set in my lifters, and then I'm gonna set the heads on there, and I'll kind of put that on time lapse for you so you can see, and get those all torqued up, and then do the front stuff, and then this thing's gonna sing Freedom and Bald Eagles and 6-2 goodness, hopefully, when we're all done. Stay tuned. Okay, both of the head surfaces are prepped. I got the lifters put in. These are all LS7, I believe they are. Uh, straight lifters, no uh, deactivation lifters in here anymore. So I'm going to get some head gaskets that we have around. Uh, here we go. 6062 for all you naysayers out there. 6062, about the same thing. Uh, head gaskets, gonna get them slapped on there and then set the heads on. Heads are sitting on there now, as you can see. I'm gonna go get some head bolts and get everything strapped down. Gotta go figure out the torque specs. I can't remember those off the top of my head. Get those on and then reassemble. And then I'll let you guys hear this thing running hopefully here tonight. Started about six o'clock and it is seven, what is it? 7.25. So I like it, I like it, I like it. Let's get her done. All right, got everything in there. I had to plug in the VLOM just so it doesn't uh, go into like a four cylinder mode. It'll run, but it doesn't run well. So I started this already, but we're gonna see what it does with that plugged in. Hopefully it sounds better. Um, and so yeah, it's all back together. It is now, uh, you can't see really, but that's uh, 10 o'clock. So six to 10, you can put two heads on an LS and I've been jacking around for an hour uh, doing fluids and stuff, so. That sounds better. Check engine lights staying off. Oil pressure's coming up. Lo and behold, LS freaking lifters. That's kind of going away, but yeah. One of the lifters is pretty ticky, but you'll have that. But anyways, that's that. I know that wasn't a whole lot of fun to keep track of, but we've got a 6.2 running again. Mama's gonna be happy to have this thing. Uh, she's been without a vehicle for a little while, like I said, so cool. All in all, good night. Get this thing tuned and uh, should be ready for the races, literally. Guys, this is the moment you've been waiting for and I've been promising for a long time. This here is the Northwest Eco Crawler Kit. Northwest Fab makes this. Um, there's a couple different things you can do with these kits for these type of trucks. Um, you can go gear to gear, or I'm sorry, um, 
uh, original case out of one of those chain driven to a, a gear driven. Um, I thought this would be a cooler way to keep it, um, I guess you could say factory, but I, what I'm trying to say is use um, original cases um, for trucks like this. So um, parts would be available if you're trying to source stuff, you know, for those years of trucks, because uh, the first gen Tacomas and up use similar cases, which is what I'm using for my donor case, which is outside. Anyways, we're gonna go through this. Um, pardon me for all the noise this is gonna make, I'll do my best. But this here is the uh, input shaft. This is just the, this is the list of everything they give you. Um, kind of give you a checklist of everything they got. And then look at all that beauty. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. So, a lot of the reason I love the idea of these is just the bling. Um, not that you're going to see it in a truck like this, but um, you get to have something that not a lot of people have. And I truly think this is going to be a pretty tough design. That planetary that gets shoved in here um is going to be pretty tough so there's one case half and then here's the second half so nice love it and here's my shifter levers, which they ended up sending me some shorter ones and I had to have them uh, send others because whenever I mocked this all up, I knew these weren't gonna work. But my low and high, two and four, low and high. And then probably the best part of this is when it's all said and done, you get this awesome Trident shifter setup that they have. Um, this is all the pieces for it. And this allows you to have triple shifters. So you connect the fronts, the backs, this is the center, vice versa. And then we're gonna have everything all working together and uh, be in one spot. Being my truck is a six speed, as you know, um, I thought, or what I'm hoping for, or at least the measurements I took too. Uh, imagine this is the shift column in my truck. You would have the shifter right here. And I think my, my shift uh, shift levers for the four wheel drive and everything for the transfer cases will be sitting here, whereas my, my shifter will be up here. I'm gonna kick them back. I might end up losing one um, cup holder, but I, I, I'm not sure. I may kick one off to the side, one to the left, one to the right, something like that. But anyways, then they have all the linkages and stuff that run between these. Um, if you've done the research looking into these, then you know. And then just miscellaneous bolts and everything. Um, I gave them, or had them give me a new uh, cage bearing that goes in between there for the input shaft because they're known for just wearing out. But anyways, this is everything we've been waiting on. Just these simple little parts. Um, and then of course my donor case I'll be using the planetary out of is out in the garage. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. But pretty stoked. I hope you guys are too. Um, thanks for clocking in again on another video. I know it's been a while, like I said earlier, but, uh, things have been going on and hopefully we can start tearing into this real soon and I'll do a little step-by-step -step on this and show you what all it takes. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you and I will catch you on the next one.